Well, good evening, everybody. A welcome to evening prayer. Thank you for joining us this evening and to those who will join us uh, later on. I hope you've had a good day. Uh, we are here to pray together in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit. So without further ado, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we can meet together in this way to pray, to hear your word, to lift up to you people and situations that are on our hearts, to receive from you the peace and the strength that we need at this time by your Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. As we behold your Son enthroned on the cross, stir up in us the fire of your love that we may be cleansed from all our sins and walk with you in newness of life, singing the praise of him who died for us and for our salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm this evening is Psalm number 33. Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars, he puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be, he commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations, he thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. On those whose hope is in his unfailing love. To deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. I'm going to read those last two verses again. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our strength. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. 
May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So our Old Testament reading this evening, we continue in the prophecy of Jeremiah. And tonight we're in chapter 22, verses 1 to 5, and then 13 to 19. Judgment against wicked kings. This is what the Lord says. Go down to the place of the king of Judah and proclaim this message there. Hear the word of the Lord to you, king of Judah, who sit on David's throne. You, your officials and your people who come through these gates. This is what the Lord says. Do what is just and right. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you are careful to carry out these commands, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this palace, riding in chariots and on horses, accompanied by their officials and their people. But if you do not obey these commands, declares the Lord, I swear by myself that this palace will become a ruin. Verse 13. Woe to him who builds his palace by unrighteousness, his upper rooms by injustice, making his own people work for nothing, not paying them for their labour. He says, I will build myself a great palace with spacious upper rooms, so he makes large windows in it, panels with cedar and decorates it in red. Does it make you a king to have more and more cedar? Did not your father have food and drink? He did what was right and just. So all went well with him. He defended the cause of the poor and needy, and so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord? But your eyes and your heart are set only on dishonest gain, on shedding innocent blood on, and on oppression and extortion. Therefore this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. They will not mourn for him. Alas, my brother, alas, my sister, they will not mourn for him. Alas, my master, alas, his splendour, he will have the burial of a donkey, dragged away and thrown outside the gates of Jerusalem. Judgment on kings who are unjust. The New Testament reading is again from the Gospel of John and we're in John chapter 11 and by now you should know that, that John chapter 11 is the story of Lazarus so we continue uh, in, the, in that story. John chapter 11 starting tonight at verse 45. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realise that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for that nation, 
but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Therefore Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judah, Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the wilderness, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus. And as they stood in the temple courts, they asked one another, What do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? But the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who found out where Jesus was should report it so that they might arrest him. <coughs> Excuse me. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. By his wounds you have been healed. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary. God's love for us is revealed in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. God's love for us is revealed, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we Pray for all those who are suffering from any kind of ill health. We pray for your healing and your strength. We pray for all those who are named on our sick list at church, whose names you know. We pray for any of our friends and families that are poorly at this time. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, those who are in hospital and those who are self-isolating at home. We want to give you thanks and praise tonight for a dear member of our church who has come home from hospital and is on the mend having had pneumonia. So we praise you for that Lord. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Father we want to give you thanks for new life we thank you for all those who are giving birth at this time. We pray your protection over them. We give you thanks for news of a friend whose niece had a baby a little bit earlier than expected. But we praise you for new life, the gift of new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those who are mourning the loss of their loved ones and who are trying to arrange funerals at this difficult time. I pray for the family of a, a funeral that I took today, a, a double funeral for a husband and wife in their 90s, both died of coronavirus. We pray for that family, Lord, as they prepare uh, for this funeral. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, I want to continue to pray for your peace upon all of us. We're all suffering from different levels of anxiety and stress. May we turn to you to receive from you the peace that you so longing to give us. Bless us with your calm. Bless us with an ability not to give way to fear. Bless us with an ability not to panic. And may we be your steadfast and hopeful people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for the provision of food uh, for those who are isolated and the different schemes and ways that that is being thought of. We pray that your hand will be over all of this provision for the distribution of food to those who most need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. collect for today. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer, standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good evening, folks. Uh, see you for morning prayer around 8.15 tomorrow morning if you can join us. Bye-bye. <laughs>